Hi everybody and welcome to today's webinar on the benefits of upgrading from Nexus LMS platform to Nexus 360. We're just going to show a comparative table. So there's a lot of differences between Nexus LMS and Nexus 360. Main impetus for needing to upgrade from your traditional Nexus LMS platform to Nexus 360 is really based on the Windows systems. So Nexus 360 is designed and developed for working primarily on Windows 10. Having said that, Nexus 360 also works on Windows Server 2012 and above, but it's critical that if you are going to Windows Server 2016 or higher, which is often the mandate of healthcare systems nowadays, you will need to go to Nexus 360 because traditional Nexus LMS not supported on Windows Server 2016 R2 and above. Microsoft will officially end of life Windows Server 2012 R2 in 2023, so you need to be thinking about this now. Having a look at these advantages of Nexus 360 compared to Nexus LMS, there's a variety of advantages going through system and security levels through to functional benefits in terms of digital signing of reports, uh, workflow efficiencies and so forth, with Nexus 360 retaining HL7 compatibility. There's a lot more workflow efficiencies or workflow tools that can be obtained with Nexus 360 based on interactive dashboards, scheduling, drag and drops and reporting functionality. We're going to go through this fairly quickly today, just to give you a snippet or an overview of the advantages of 360. Um, so I want to bring to your attention that we do have a YouTube channel that goes into each of these features in greater detail, for example, the dashboards here. So each of the aspects I'll show you today you can come to our YouTube channel and basically look in greater detail to find this information. I also briefly want to point out that there's two different deployment modes for Nexus 360, a Computernetics hosted mode and a customer hosted mode. This comparative table can be provided in PDF format along with other information, so please contact us. The main differences just to consider are if you are looking at retaining Active Directory integration, if you want to have local Profusion PSG review capability on PCs within your network. If you want to have word-based macros, Microsoft word-based macros utilized in your Profusion reports, or if you want to use Citrix as a deployment mechanism, then I'd recommend that you look at a customer hosted Nexus 360 deployment. If you do not need these and you want to resolve infrastructure issues such as storage, servers, load balancing, then you could look at Compumetix hosted environment where we provide the infrastructure. Having said that, the way that we present Profusion remotely does differ. We use a different engine. So there are performance aspects that you need to consider uh, between the two deployment modes. Now we're going to look at the software itself. I'm going to type in my admin password and given this uh, Compumetix hosted deployment, we do have two-factor authentication, which you will see is additional security level. And I'll be logging in as admin account. Now I can see the two-factor authentication appearing, which is a number that's being sent to my cell phone. So when we first log in, you'll see that there's user-specific dashboards that are all about helping the user to navigate through their workflow for that day. So we've got a list of studies. If I'm a lab manager, I could have referring physicians, study sites to see where my backlog is. And I can go in here and use a bunch of different tools depending on what I need as a particular user, depending on my role in the organization. Once I've set up my dashboard, I then set up my user profile. 
The main thing I want to show you here is that we have a digital signature. So each user will set up a digital signature if they need to sign Profusion PSG re reports. The backend security, there's a lot more flexibility with Nexus 360. We set up various groups. Some are hard coded in the software, these system groups. Some are defined by the user. So the lab manager could define these groups depending on what they want. And if we go in, there's a far greater amount of detail as to what you can set up in terms of permissions for each of these user groups. Once a group permissions are set up, you simply assign a user to that group. But a very interesting aspect with Nexus 360 is the study access rules. This means if I go and have a look at one of these examples, so I've got a blue demo server. If I go in here, once I've set up my group, I could say my blue group has access to various service types. So I've got consultation, EEG, and sleep studies from the blue side. So this is where at the study level, I can restrict access in Nexus 360 to what groups see what particular studies. We also have greater audit trail, audit logging capabilities, both at the system level. So I can go in here and see when a user has logged on, logged off, I can search. It's non-editable, but searchable. So this is at the system level, or I could do it at the study level. And this is where I could apply these filters and see here that Tara, for example, has accessed the Nexus 360 application for this study of Jane Smith. So there's far greater audit controls in terms of security, but also lab management. From a scheduling point of view, I have an inbuilt scheduler. That scheduler allows me to present various services and color code those, but also have patients and studies linked to a site. So here I can filter by either service type or site in my calendar. I can even add a prepared study if I want, which is maybe I'm using a third party device that has no perfusion data, but I want to add a prepared study so that I can upload the PDF report from that third party device at a later point in time and retain it all in 360. There's also a waiting list functionality where I can have a waiting list on the left hand side and drag and drop the patients across while I'm scheduling. There are the patient and the studies levels within the database of Nexus 360, similar to traditional Nexus LMS. If I go in here and have a look at the patient, for example, and click on the orange icon, I'll see a number of database schemas or tabs in here. These are fairly comparable to Nexus LMS, the older platform these database fields commonly use. A difference is that we can upload documents. So any type of documents, pictures, files, whatever that we want to upload. If you want to keep your lab entirely paperless, you can scan them and upload them to Nexus 360 and keep them at the patient level. We can also do this at the study level. So if I go in and have a look at a study and click on that service folder, then I see the tabs here. These tabs fairly similar from Nexus LMS to Nexus 360. We do down here, for example, have our service type and our site, which is how we tag them for those study access rules, as I discussed before. A lot of these tabs are similar in that you have the same fields, except the staff roles. We've re-engineered the way the staff roles works in Nexus 360. And here, once we allocate users to groups, we can then select them from a drop-down list. So I can tag here, for example, who's my lab physician, who is the secretary, who's the referring physician in the scoring tab. Just as we did with the patient, level of the database. At the study level, we also have this document section. This is where our perfusion sleep study report is. I've got a lot of reports here being a demo site. Obviously, you won't have as many of these in a clinical scenario, but it's important that perfusion stores the final report here. But I can also, like we did with the patients, add documents. So I could scan a patient or study referral in and keep it at the study level, not just the patient level. 
I can also add letter. So I could have letter templates that I want to set up. So for example, questionnaires or position orders for CPAP. So I can run these letters. It will be based off a template that I've pre-designed and then it will fulfill or complete the database information in that letter from within Nexus 360 and then store that questionnaire, for example, in the documents section against the study record. If I go in to have a look at a study, and I'll quickly open one here. If you were using Citrix in a customer hosted environment, we could use Citrix to launch a remote access. If we're in a CompuMedix hosted environment like this, we're using our own engine to launch a study. What we've got here is Profusion running in the web browser. And if I'm a physician and we pretend that the study's been scored already, I can just go up here to a new report, give a name for this report, and choose a template. I'm just going to choose one purely for the purpose of showing you how to sign. It will run the report. This is a very basic report where we can just see our signature tag. So if I'm the physician, simply go in here, run a spell check if I need to, and then click sign and report. This will then date and timestamp and insert my digital signature. Once again, there's another more extensive video in our YouTube channel that will explain this in greater detail. If I now shut down Profusion, we can see that I will get to choose which state the study now goes under. This is important because now we can trigger off these in Nexus 360 to automate manual tasks. So if I go into manage, system tasks, study workflow setting, this is where I can add a task and I can automate based on the study status change. So for example, if I change the status to completed, I could set it up to archive the study, delete video, send an email to notify someone or a to-do list notification so they can see it on the dashboard. So I can use this to automate any of these four tasks and then put in time periods, for example, delay periods if I like, archive, device, etc. There's another YouTube video that explains this in greater detail, but this is a really important mechanism within 360, allows you to efficiently manage your lab. Finally, once I've got all of this data, I then want to be able to report on it. So we've got two different ways of doing this. 360 search is equivalent to the study finder from Nexus LMS, but it's a nice graphical user interface. So I can go in here and just select entities of interest, drag them across, put a condition there if I wish, and then execute a report and it will preview it down here. I can then export to Excel and see that information. So this is commonly used by people for clinical reporting, but as well as for research. So if you want to run a SQL report um, on a whole bunch of database fields and export it to Excel for data manipulation, it's the easy way to do it. The other efficient workflow tool is lab reports. So you have an inbuilt template in Nexus 360 that allows you to design SQL based reports. So we can go in here and say we want to do a study count by site and service type. And this is typically a tool used by people who are used to MS Access and things like this, where they'll go in and they'll set up the fields and set up the layout for the report and how they want it to look. Once that's been done, from an end user perspective, all I need to do is go to the lab reports tab and click on our view icon. And that will now run the report and populate it with the data as at today and save it in a nice PDF format. And up the top here on the left, I can choose different date search options if I like, depending if that's been embedded in the report. One of the main benefits of Nexus 360 is that you will have constant ability to get upgrades as part of your subscription, both to Nexus 360 as well as Profusion PSG and Profusion EEG if you purchase the EEG or PSG software. Um, the way we do that, you will get a notification via the system that an update's become available. And if that happens, you simply go to the help menu and you'll download and install it when it's necessary to update your acquisition PCs. As a reminder, 
you do have this information in the YouTube channel, so you can refer to it at any time. But if you'd like to contact us and get PDFs or more extensive dem demos, please let us know. Thanks very much for viewing this webinar.